Hey Bulldogs, let's check out this week's events and announcements. On Monday, we've got golf and football. Watch the JV and freshmen play at Riverdale. Buy tickets on GoFan.co. On Tuesday, it's Senior ACT Day, seniors only on campus. It's also the first day of fall, and you can go check out the girls' volleyball and girls' soccer teams, both Laverne. Wednesday's Redhead Appreciation Day. Thursday, be sure to dress up in your comfy and coziest PJs. Check out the Science Olympiad and Science Club meeting at 3.30 in room 404. Watch girls volleyball or girls soccer. And on Friday, wear your purple and gold for our home game against Antioch at 7 p.m. Hola! This month is Hispanic Heritage Month. It started September 15th and ends on October 15th. Each week, we will be highlighting a different Hispanic or Latino person of influence. This week, we're recognizing Chef Jose Andres, chef, philanthropist, and entrepreneur. Born in the northern region of Asturias, Spain in 1969, Chef Andres moved to NYC in 1991. Today, he is known as the pioneer of Spanish tapas in the United States, as well as for his humanitarian work. Chef Andres is the owner of over 30 restaurants, two of which have been awarded two Michelin stars each. He was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in both 2012 and 2018. He has won the James Beard Foundation Awards for Outstanding Chef and Humanitarian of the Year. In 2010, Chef Jose Andres and his wife Patricia formed the nonprofit organization World Central Kitchen with the goal of creating smart solutions to hunger and poverty. Since its founding, World Central Kitchen has responded to countless natural disasters and other hunger crises by bringing healthy food to millions of people around the world. Most notably, Chef Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen served over 3.6 million meals to the people of Puerto Rico after the devastating Hurricane Maria, as well as over 25 million meals in over 400 U.S. cities since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States. Among his many other accomplishments, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Association of Culinary Professionals in 2017. He has also been awarded the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute's Chair Medallion Award. To find out more about Chef Jose Andres or World Central Kitchen, follow them on Instagram at Chef Jose Andres and at WC Kitchen. My name is Sarah Johnson from SHSBNN here to discuss the major stories you missed last week in two minutes. Life on Venus. Exciting news from the solar system on Monday, September 14th, a team of MIT scientists announced they had found phosphine gas in the atmosphere. This was a surprise because Venus is known as being hot and was thought not to support life. Sarah Sager, MIT scientist, explains that after finding the gas, a byproduct of life known for its fishy odor, that they exhaustively searched through all known chemistry but didn't find anything that could produce more than the tiniest amount of phosphine in the Earth's atmosphere. That could just lead two possibilities. Either the gas was created by a yet-to-be-discovered life form, or it's some kind of chemical reaction that scientists haven't yet discovered. Either way, a trip to Venus seems like a hot and smelly vacation. Just as Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away from complications from pancreatic cancer on Friday, September 18th. She was 87. Ginsburg was appointed by President Bill Clinton in 1993 and made consistent progressive votes on decisive social issues, including abortion rights, voting rights, same-sex marriage, affirmative action, and immigration. Chief Justice John Roberts said, Our nation has lost a jurist of historic stature. 
We at the Supreme Court have lost a cherished colleague. Today we mourn, but with new confidence that future generations will remember Ruth Bader Ginsburg as we know her, a tireless and resolute champion of justice. Wildfires continue to burn in the West Coast. A blazing series of wildfires sweeping the West Coast are producing fires and thick smoke, resulting in hospitalizations across Washington, Nevada, California, and Oregon. The wildfires are worsened by lightning stress and continuing dry conditions. Firefighters from across the globe are coming to help the blazes that are causing millions of dollars in property damage and have killed at least 33 people. There you go, the major stories you missed last week in two minutes. Thank you. Tuesday is ACT day for our seniors, so here are some top ACT tips. The first, don't leave any answer blank. Pick a letter of the day to fill in the bubble. Don't leave any bubbles unshaded before the end of your time. Answer the easy questions first. If you're worried about time on your first pass through, answer the ones that you know. This is especially helpful for math. In English, ACT prefers the most concise option. Choose something that's grammatically correct and with the least amount of punctuation. Be sure to write in your test booklet. That's what it's there for. Cross off wrong answers, jot down reminders, and more. And watch your time. You've got 30 seconds for English, science, and reading, and one minute per question for math. Good luck on the ACT, Bulldogs. Thanks to Ms. Wester for content. I'm with SHSBNN, ready and willing to talk to Ms. Short about Student Council. Hi, Ms. Short. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you a few questions about Student Council. What would it involve if I were to join Student Council? If you wanted to join Student Council, right now we have our applications on the school webpage. So you would go to where it says Clubs and Activities and find our application. There's also an orientation video that tells you more about what we do for those distance learners or in-person learners since we can't have large interest meetings. You would fill out that form, um, join our Remind, and then give dues to myself or Mr. Tolbert, and then you would be in the club for the year. What are the benefits I would from Student Council? Student Council is a wonderful club. It's really student-based. It's a student-driven club. 
So we do a lot of things that give back to the community of Smyrna High School as well as the community of Smyrna, Tennessee. We run things like the blood drive where we um, give, we donate blood obviously and it goes directly to our hospitals in, in our community. We do things with the canned food drive which gives um, food to the Second Harvest Food Bank. We help with homecoming and King of Hearts. Um, we do things like community service around the schools if the buses need cleaning or if there's any kind of beautification we can do around the school, student council really steps up and does those things. Okay. So what are the leadership roles in student council? Right now we have five officers and they each kind of share roles. Um, to become an officer, you would just need to do 10 extra community service hours to um, qualify to be an officer and then you would need to maintain a 3.0 GPA. And then at the end of the school year, we would host um, interviews for our officers and they could interview to become um, an officer with myself and my co-sponsors, and then we choose from the applications. Well, I hope you don't mind, but could there be a six five for like an officer? I have like a three point seven five GPA. <laughs> can I join? You can definitely join student council, but you'll have to wait until next year. To Come be on, officer. I'm sure I had to do my last class. I Not know. A bit of I know. Well, hey, next year I would love for you to be an officer. Just this year, we're already full. Okay, so what are the dues? The dues right now it's twenty dollars to be in student council, and that includes a free T-shirt. Free T-shirt, like y'all don't want a free T-shirt. I know I'm wearing a lot of shirts. I need a free T-shirt. Can I get a free T-shirt? If you pay your twenty dollars dues, then definitely you'll get a free T-shirt. Okay. Thank you, Miss Stewart, for allowing us to interview you. Absolutely. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. This week's college of the week is Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech offers 40 undergraduate degrees. The top five programs include mechanical engineering, basic business, nursing, multidisciplinary studies, and computer science. The student to faculty ratio is 18 to one, allowing for small class sizes. Tennessee Tech is located in Cookville, Tennessee, a town that offers the best of both rural and urban living. Tennessee Tech is located within minutes of three lakes where you can swim, hike, canoe, fish, and picnic to your heart's desire. Tennessee Tech's campus is an 87-building complex located on a beautiful 235 acres. Nearly two-thirds of all students receive some form of financial aid. Be sure to scan the QR code for an informational Zoom meeting. Have you ever wanted to be on stage? Well, now's your chance. It's the SHS Homecoming Show Auditions. The annual Homecoming Show in the SHS Theater will be held on October 14th and 15th, just after fall break. Students may audition to be in this show by attending auditions after school on September 23rd and 24th. Auditions will be outside if weather permits and social distancing will be enforced. Singers, musicians, rappers, dancers, jugglers, athletes, actors, mimes, magicians, puppeteers, acrobats, and comics are all encouraged to audition. The cast list for the show will be announced on Friday, September 25th. Students do not have to be in drama club to audition. All SHS students, faculty, staff, and teachers are welcome to audition for the homecoming show. See or email Mrs. Quinn if you have any questions. See you on September 23rd and 24th.